Hey, I'm Shane. I'm going to give you a little breakdown video on my digital recorder, the FS5 for the VX, and kind of show you the ins and outs of it. First things first, definitely get a USB-A to USB-A cable. That's how you're going to log the footage from it. I definitely recommend finding one on Amazon because there's other USB-A cables that come with kind of like a weird program built into it. I've seen some that have like, they're really thicker. There's like some sort of program that's built into it, but they won't work with this. Just find a completely basic to basic USB-A, and that's how you'll log your footage on it. Log your clips plug in that guy, you'll hit F3, and it's going to kind of like think for a minute. The more footage you have on here, the more it's going to be thinking, and eventually it will pop up on your hard drive. I mean, on your desktop as a hard drive. It'll just pop up as like some random number right here, and then you're going to go down to F the examples for the FCP right here, and that's where your, your files will be in this folder right here. And you can delete them off here into the trash bin, or you can just format that once you're done logging all the clips. But what I definitely do is I, I'll drag all the clips onto my desktop, just take every single clip, and then I'll, then I'll filter through that folder in case I miss a clip. But also I've noticed that get to the first spot of the day, film the whole session and you turn it off. And then once you get to the next spot and you turn it back on and start filming again, the files are all gonna be random. It's, that's kind of the downside is that the files aren't gonna be like organized. Everything's gonna be mixed up. The more you turn it on and off, it kind of reboots. It. Drag all the files and you kind of have to filter through every single one to find the makes. But what I do is I still mark it after a make, I'll still mark it with my hand. And then when I'm going through all the files, I'll just be like skimming through it really quickly. And if, and if I see my hand, then I know that one's a make. That way I don't have to sit there and watch every single clip every single time. That's kind of my tactic I've been running right now, but maybe there might be a better one down the road. First eject out of the desktop and then you'll hit F4 and then I'll eject that guy and you're all good to go. You can, you can also play back footage on here, but the quality is going to be really bad. So also what you can do is um, after you, they got the homie landed the clip, you can just put it, you can go, you know, go to playback on the VX and then you press play here and it'll play the last clip so you can watch the last clip film filmed and the quality through the view generator is going to be way better than the view than the quality on this thing it's all pretty like low pixels and stuff so i'd recommend that for the playback if you want to watch the last clip that was filmed <laughs> exactly yeah no more cap cam no more tapes i mean tapes are what like 12 bucks a tape now or something they're going for this is definitely going to be saving some money i got this one off ebay for around 300 bucks and i definitely think the secret is to find a non-skateboarder who's selling one of these because I know there's a big marketplace for this now or a lot of those VX like uh, reseller accounts seem to be buying a lot of these and then doubling the price which you know I guess you gotta do what you gotta do but definitely if you can find a non-skateboarder that way you're gonna save some money on these because these are pretty old tech these have been around for a minute once you turn it on and everything film in raw dv don't film in uh mov the, the audio is going to be different when you film in mov the audio just sounds like crunk like crunching it doesn't you can't even tell it's just complete garbage and then uh i mean if you want i, I use mpeg stream clip to convert i just usually convert it all to mov files anyways from dv because i've noticed that when you film in dv it doesn't actually date the file so i like to have have my files kind of dated so when I convert it when I log the footage that day and I'll convert it to MOVs you know like the actual I can actually date like my files and everything so I know if I need to look back for whatever for the batteries uh, you hold down this guy and they kind of fall out but they don't really fall out so I kind of taped all my batteries so I can actually have a tag to pull on to get them out easier because it's an internal hard drive so I don't want to like just keep banging on it to like knock out the batteries. I would definitely recommend buying a couple extra ones. I bought two more off eBay, found some guy that was selling them and I just kind of tagged the rest all of them just to have little tags to pull in and out of. Usually so far been, what I've been using a battery will last me a full day but sometimes uh, maybe two batteries a day so not too bad. All you got to do is record and then press stop to stop recording and this is about like a 100 gig hard drive so i mean it's like what over seven hours or something i don't know you're chilling on time wise for footage that's for sure how i put mine on the vx i just bought like some 15 pound tested velcro and i just did that and so far that's been pretty decent i've been filming with it a lot now and it has not fallen off or even i mean you can even buy more like powerful velcro if you want to make it really secure got it on there so you could still open the tape deck if you still want to film tape. So I kind of did one here and one here and just kind of mash it up. So that way you can still use the tape deck if you want to. And then for the firewire cable, um, I've seen some people kind of do like they'll mount it the other way around, vice versa. But um, I found this little guy on eBay for like eight bucks and I definitely recommend this guy. It seems to be a little more flexible and kind of keeps it a little more compact. I would definitely recommend trying to keep your cables always plugged in because the more you're going to unplug your firewire, you know, like the more you might wear out the port. I mean, that's going to be a headache once you wear that out. So try to keep everything like plugged in and mounted and kind of modify your camera bag 
to like be able to fit the whole setup in and out so there's not much pressure being pushed on any of the ports or anything. The only problems I noticed once was when Tarf had bonked the camera and this got loose a little bit and then it was glitching a little bit. Double check and just kind of periodically like make sure everything's plugged in because if even if it's like halfway plugged in, you know, footage will start actually glitching on this thing. So just kind of make sure your ports are all plugged in nice and tight every time. And then for the settings and everything, right, there's like this wheel's kind of spinning and you can just click right on it and then get to all the other options and things. There's a couple different pages to cycle through operations and setup and functions. And you can set the different functions for one, two, and three on these apps right here, what, the, what you want them to do. And then on utilities, you can go to format and that's how you can format the card if you want to format it. I haven't really experimented too much, but maybe even turning down your LCD brightness, you know, might be able to conserve some battery as well. Might want to keep that in mind too. And then just go back on left to get back to the main screen. And then you'll see raw DV what you're filming in right now too. Uh, recording setups, record formats right there. And then this is just the center buttons, like the enter button. And you can just do DV or HDV and the DT format. Run the raw DV for now. Realistically, all, I mean, the quality versus here onto the computer is exactly the same as if you're filming on a mini DV tape. So far, I've noticed no audio difference or no video quality. Everything's been the exact same. I've done a couple tests where I film the clip on the tape and then film the clip with this guy and then I compared the two and they were both the same and I can link them up in this video right now as well. So yeah, and then even when you do your, you know, your custom color settings, everything with the sharpness and the color level, everything will reflect back onto here. So pretty much anything the VX is doing, it will record exactly the same onto this guy. Uh, also, I've noticed the VX battery is going to last a lot longer because it doesn't need to power the turning the heads every time you're filming and stopping and going on the recording onto the mini DV tape. So your battery life is going to last longer on the VX too as well, since the camera doesn't have to work as hard as it normally would. If you're not, I definitely recommend using a Tadashi filter. I don't know how people don't use these, especially with even if it's like an extreme fisheye too even if you're filming HD like it's kind of crazy if you don't have one for your MK1 or this uh, you might low-key be a psychopath maybe <laughs> just because the way these are so these things are so rare and you're, I mean your mark one is it's like I, I couldn't even take the risk now like of it getting scratched so yeah I would highly recommend buying these for like 30 bucks it's worth definitely well worth the money for sure one thing I was kind of nervous about too is adding the weight to the side of the camera like I didn't know if that was gonna like you know cause like you know I'm not used to like the the balance of the camera but realistically it's not that much weight and it's pretty mellow and especially if you go do the velcro route you're going to like have less weight than doing the rigs from down here you know that a lot of people will do this definitely lightens it up even more and i mean if realistically if you're used to even filming with the hpx and the extreme i mean like this is still gonna be so much more lighter so i wouldn't even stress it if you're worried about extra weight or anything and same with just like the vx when you're done for the day or anything you know to keep the battery out so the battery doesn't drain while you're leaving the camera in there all overnight or anything and same with this guy take the battery out once you're done for the day so when i mounted this guy you know i did the velcro on the sides where you can still utilize the tape deck if you take this off to still record on tape if you need to but i tried to place it where i could still access like you know the wheels and everything where I can still touch and stuff and like the exposure wheels so it's still kind of visible and you can still kind of mess with that stuff so try to place it where you're not really going to be covering too much where you can still get in and utilize some of the you know the buttons on the VX and everything keep that in mind yeah I think that's it I think that's all the ins and outs of this guy um, if anyone else is out there and using it as well and they got any other tips or whatever I guess comment below or something keep adding in the info keep us updated but uh, so far I'm pretty hyped on this thing I would definitely recommend getting one if you're going to keep using the VX